My name is Ryan Holger. I'm with HVAC Solutions. Uh, we are part of Temperature Equipment Corporation, uh, Harry Alter, and Excelsior. Um, those are the three companies that we are uh, affixed to here in the Chicagoland area, uh, as well as Minnesota, Kansas City, and Wisconsin. Um, we do a webinar every single Monday, um, and this week's webinar is Venstar Thermostats. Uh, for the, those of you that are already familiar with the Venstar line, the second half of this is going to be talking about the new color touchscreen stat that's coming out in a couple weeks. So even if some of this sounds familiar, you may want to hang on towards the end and you'll get to see that new stuff. All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and start things here. All right, so most of you guys probably already know Venstar is not a new company nor really a small company. Uh, Venstar has been in business uh, for almost 20 years. Uh, it's the third largest manufacturer in the world for thermostats, which is about a 20% market share. I'm sure everybody can guess uh, who the big, big, the big beast is, which is Honeywell, and then below Honeywell is White Rogers, and then you have Venstar. Uh, the reason it's probably the largest manufacturer that you never heard of is because for several years, decade even, uh, Venstar only did manufacturing for other thermostat manufacturers as an OEM supplier. And in the past few years, they've been actually selling the thermostats themselves, branded as Venstar. Um, and every year, they sell well over a million thermostats. All right, so we're going to kind of just uh, walk through each of these stats here so you get an idea of them. And uh, if you have any questions, you can, you can type them in the box there, and I'll do my best to answer them while we're online here. And if not, I will call you back and answer you afterwards. Um, the entry-level stats for Venstar are the uh, T0130 and T1035. The 0130 is non-programmable. The T1035 is uh, 5 plus 2-day programmable, which means one scheduled for weekdays, one scheduled for weekends. Uh, they both look physically the same. Um, they can be system-powered off of the 24 volts from the furnace, or they can be battery-powered. Uh, either way, uh, this is the only battery stat that Venstar uses. Uh, all the rest of the stats require system power from the furnace. Uh, so just this entry-level one here, which is what you would use on your quote-unquote four-wire thermostat replacement type jobs. Um, there is a, I'm not sure if you can see there, there's a, a little LED there right below the up and down arrows. Right now it's showing red. Red means that it's physically uh, in the heating mode right now, running the furnace. Uh, if it displays green, that means it's in the cooling mode. And if it's off, then it's, it's, it's doing neither at the moment. Uh, and you can easily see that from across the room, so you know what mode this thing is in. Um, there is a low battery indicator, so for several weeks uh, before the batteries die, you'll get a display that says low battery on it. Uh, there's non volatile memory, so if you change the batteries out, don't lose all your programs or anything weird like that. All the programs are still in there. These guys are one stage heat, one stage cool. They can do um, gas electric units or a heat pump if it was just uh, you know single stage uh, with no backup. For those dual fuel type applications, we'll talk about those in a little bit with another stat. So in the Midwest market here, this is mainly a single stage heat, single stage cool, traditional thermostat for gas electric units. Um, <clears throat> one step up from that, and only uh, amazingly only a few dollars more, is the T1010 and T1050 stats. Um, these guys are very cost effective, and these are probably the least expensive two stage stats that I've seen from any of the major manufacturers. So these guys do two-stage heat, two-stage cool. They have that same bicolor LED on there that can uh, glow green or red for cooling mode or heating mode. Uh, the T1010 is a one-day programmable, and the T1050 is a five plus two-day programmable. Once again, these guys can handle heat pumps or traditional gas furnaces with electric cooling. The displays on these guys, as well as the uh, battery stats, are very, very large. If you have not seen one, you should definitely stop in at one of our Harry Alter or Excelsior stores. They all have a display on the wall with all these stats on it powered up. And you can see the display. Uh, I jokingly uh, refer to these as the old people stats, but uh, you know, I don't mean any harm by that. It's just really easy for, for someone's grandma to be able to see the numbers, right? So these guys have large displays as well for the two-stage stats. And these guys are very, um, I want to say, petite stats. They're very small. They're a tiny little square. Uh, just a couple inches by a couple inches for these two-stage stats. Um, my favorite stat uh, is the T1100FS. Um, it's a two-stage heat, two-stage cool stat. Uh, and it's really cool because the entire stat is about the thickness of a light switch plate cover. Uh, and the only thing that sticks out from it is the sensor on the bottom left side here you can see. And it sticks out about as far as a light switch would stick out. 
So this thing blends right in with the decor. It doesn't throw anything off. It mounts right on a T1900 box. Everything looks normal. Too heat, too cool. Uh, like we said, system power. Same large display. Same bicolor LED for the heating and cooling mode. This guy is seven day programmable. So each individual day could have its own schedule. Like every other vent star stat, it can control heat pumps as well as gas electric systems. It mounts very flush to the wall. Like I said, like a light switch plate. It's the exact same thickness. looks exactly the same. And uh, this guy can handle an outside air sensor as well. Um, so if you press the, uh, press the outside air button, you'll be able to, to see what the temperature is outside at that moment in time. That's what the outside air sensor looks like. Uh, it also fits in a 1900 box. And uh, it's... In this case, three wires from the sensor back to the thermostat. Uh, Benstar also has a line of wireless thermostats as well as uh, wireless accessories, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But right now, let's talk about the wireless thermostats. Uh, I have personally been using these thermostats for probably eight years, uh, although in my case, they were branded as Carrier. But it's the exact same hardware, exact same software. Everything inside is the same. The only thing that's different between the Carrier and the Benstar is the logo changed. So you get two pieces. You get the thermostat, which you can see up on the left side there with the uh, temperature display on it. And then you have the receiver, which is down on the bottom here, with the, uh, the four LED lights on it to tell you if it's in heat mode, cool mode, fan mode, and if it has 24 volt power. That receiver wires back over at the furnace or at the, uh, the air handler or rooftop or whatever it is that you're trying to control, commercially or residentially. And then the thermostat talks wirelessly to the receiver and the receiver physically has the relays and the hard wiring to the furnace. So it's wireless uh, thermostat with, with uh, a, a hardwired sub base that's over at the piece of equipment. Um, it says on here 500 feet unobstructed. Unobstructed means you're standing in a cornfield in Nebraska and nothing is in your way. That's not realistic for most buildings. But if you're talking residential, you could put this thing you know, at the furnace and then you know, uh, go up to the second floor, no problem. Uh, if you're doing commercial applications, uh, it often gets used in large open floor plan office areas or uh, cafeterias and stuff like that. No problem there. The only time it really becomes an issue is when you start having walls with uh, concrete rebar and stuff like that. Then things get a little little tough. Uh, but if you're not sure about it, call me and we can, uh, we can help you out with it and also give you some advice on how to test it. These guys are two-stage heat, two-stage cool. They can handle gas electric equipment, whether that's rooftops or furnaces as well as heat pump systems. They're seven day programmable. Um, like I said, they've been in the field for a very long time. I've been using them for eight years. So this is well established wireless technology. This is not something new. This is well used, well thought out. Uh, there are two pretty cool applications. Actually, there's several cool applications you can do that you wouldn't necessarily think of. One is you can have up to four thermostats for a single receiver. All right, so what does that mean? That means, um, if I want to have a stat on my uh, on my hallway wall or my dining room wall, wherever it is, um, doing its normal program, its its seven day program, telling the receiver and the furnace what to do, I can do that, and then I can take a second thermostat and put it upstairs on my nightstand or wherever I want or in my office or something like that. When I go to bed at night, if I'm too hot or I'm too cold, I can press any button on that thermostat on my nightstand, and that thermostat will now take over control of the system for the rest of the evening. And then in the morning, when the thermostat down on the wall in the dining room goes to its next scheduled time period, say 6 a.m. or whatever, it'll take back over automatically. I don't have to remember to go press the button on the other stat. Um, so we can do that. I got a little pop-up message about audio here. So let's see what that thing said. See if this is a little bit better, hopefully, for you guys. Uh, so you can have up to four thermostats doing that, talking to one receiver. One thermostat can be the master, and he gets the time schedule. The other one, two, or three thermostats would just be uh, slaves, and they'd be able to take over for a single time period, um, but they wouldn't have the schedule in them. The other way you can do it is you can have one thermostat with multiple receivers. So let's say I had that. What I think I said before, a cafeteria example, like at a high school or something like that. I got two rooftops feeding into it, but I don't want these two rooftops fighting, one going to heat, one to go into cooling at the same time. It's not very energy productive. So I can take two receivers, put them in each rooftop unit, and have one thermostat tell both receivers what to do, heating mode, 
cooling mode, etc. Uh, the only thing I will caution you with on rooftops is you don't want to put these receivers in the 480 volt electrical panel. There can be some EMF interference because of that, so you got to remote them over a little bit, but uh, it is definitely a doable application. And the last thing you could probably do with it is uh, if you have a split system, uh, an indoor air handler or furnace and a condensing unit outside, and you don't have enough wires between the two, or the wires get broken or something like that, I can use two receivers, one at the indoor unit, one at the outdoor unit, and have the thermostat tell them both what to do. So on a cooling call, he tells the air handler or the furnace to put the fan on, and he tells the condensing unit to turn the compressor on. Uh, and they have no idea that they're not connected to each other, right? So those are some of the cool things you can do with this, and you could probably come up with several others as well. Well, let's go here. All right, then the, uh, the last stat we're going to talk about is the slimline stat. Well, the last stat we're going to talk about is the color touch stat, but for the regular stats, it's the slimline stat here. Um, there's six models of it. We typically only stock two. We don't really stock the non-programmable models because if you want a non-programmable stat, you're probably going to use one of the stats I showed you earlier. Uh, these are more of the, uh, the fancy stats that have all the cool features. So the T1800 is your uh, residential stat. The T1900 is that same residential stat with built-in humidity sensing, right? And we'll talk about that. And then the 2800 is your typical commercial stat. The T2900 is where you'd go if you needed more features like uh, remote sensors and things like that. So these guys can all handle up to three stages of heat, two stages of cool. Same thing again, gas electric or heat pumps. Uh, for the residential ones, the 18 and 1900, um, they are dual fuel capable, which means with the addition of an outside air sensor, like I showed you earlier, this thermostat can decide if it's most cost effective to run the heat pump or if it's time to shut the heat pump off and turn on the gas furnace. Right? So if you're in a climate like that where you have good electric rates, but your heat pump's not able to keep up in the winter, this is the right kind of stat to do with that. And when you set these stats up, you can tell them if they're regular seven-day programmable stats. You can make them non-programmable stats. You can make them auto changeover. You can make them manual changeover. You have that flexibility to work with them. If you're using the commercial stats, you can actually lock the displays of the stats out, or you could put set point limits in there so someone can't say, jack the heat up to 80 degrees, or crank the cooling down to 60 degrees, or something crazy like that. You could put limits on there so they can still adjust their set points so they feel like they got some control, but not let them get crazy with it. Um, same bicolor LED for heating and cooling mode. Like I said, this guy does support outside air sensors. Um, this is what it actually looks like when you press the outside air button on the stat. It'll give you the outside air temperature reading, in this case 83 degrees. It'll also tell you the low and the high temperatures recorded for the day. In this case, 68 was the low, 92 was the high on this guy. Um, and then plus it'll do the dual field changeover on the residential stats. Uh, you can also do remote temperature sensing with, with some of these stats. So the T19, excuse me, T2900 commercial stat is the most likely candidate for that. So if you got, say, a restaurant, you don't want all the stats sitting in the dining area, maybe you want to put them back in the manager's office, and then you want to have remote sensors out in the space actually sensing the temperature, you can do that. Um, the T1900 has a built-in humidity sensor, like I mentioned. That can turn on your humidifier, or it can enable a dehumidifier, or it can enable a dehumidification sequence with your traditional cooling equipment. Uh, and then commercially, the T2900 can do those kind of things as well, just in a little different different fashion. That 2900 also has a built-in light sensor on top of it. So um, if you've got rooms that have variable occupancy, meaning some days people are there, some days they're not, and it's kind of hard to predict when someone's going to be there, um, that stat can be a fantastic stat. When you come in and turn the lights on in the office, that stat sees that the lights are on, and the stat goes to its occupied heating and cooling set points. You shut the lights off. After X amount of time, it says, well, nobody's here. I'm going to go ahead and go into setback and save some energy. Uh, this stack can also handle a drain pan sensor. So instead of wiring your, uh, your condensate overflow switch to kill the compressor on a unit, you can actually wire it to the thermostat, and the thermostat will still kill the compressor, but it will also display for you service pan on the front screen so you know what's wrong with it. And there's some pretty cool programmable outputs, which I'll show you here. Um, this stat can do lots of different things, and this is a little matrix of jumpers on the back of the stat, which is kind of scary at first because none of us really like jumpers. But this is what allows the stat to do all those different things I mentioned. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have enough uh, 
capacity to kind of really do it. So the way it works is I, I have my two stages of heat, my one stage of cooling, and then my fan. Uh, those four relays on the stat are always dedicated. Then I have three other relays, miscellaneous one, two, and three, that I can play with. And I can make them either a uh, second stage of cooling. I can make them a third stage of heat, where it says W3 here. I can make them um, control a humidifier, like we mentioned earlier, or control a dehumidifier. On the commercial stats, I can use them to enable an economizer or disable an economizer. And then the last one is that programmable one, which we'll talk about in a second here. So depending on where I put the jumpers dictates what these things do. So in this example here that I just, just drew for you, uh, the miscellaneous 2 terminal has a jumper on W3, so that wires to the third stage of heating on this piece of equipment. Right? And then in this example, miscellaneous 3, where it says dehum, would wire to my dehumidification unit. Miscellaneous 1, in this case, would wire to my second stage of cooling. The programmable output is really, really the cool thing. Uh, so if I pick that programmable output and put the jumper on there for either miscellaneous 1, 2, or 3, in this case, miscellaneous 2, I get three choices on what I can do to control this thing. The first one is I can control it based on time. And this time schedule is completely independent of the time schedule of the HVAC equipment that this thermostat is also controlling. So I can have an extra time schedule that I can use to do whatever I want. Um, so in this example here, I can use it to turn on Malibu lights. I can use it to turn on an outdoor sprinkler system. Uh, I can use it to turn on a bathroom exhaust fan in a commercial building. So that way I'm running the exhaust fan from whatever, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. when I'm occupied. I can do any of those types of things. Or I can choose to control this thing based on temperature, based on a remote sensor. So I already told you that I can have remote sensors on this stat, and I can use them to control the HVAC equipment, or I can use them to average with, with the sensors on the stat, or I can have that remote temperature sensor do something totally unrelated to the stat that has nothing to do with the stat and the HVAC equipment is doing. So for example, I might put this thing in a, uh, in an extra room and, and use it to enable a damper. So if I got a bonus room above a garage or something like that and I want to be able to open and close that damper based on temperature needs of that, I can do that. Or I can uh, have it control a duct booster fan so I can get more airflow into a room when it doesn't have enough based on the temperature of that particular room. Lots of things I can do with that. The last thing I can do, and we didn't talk about the phone option yet for this thermostat, we'll talk about that in a second, is I can actually enable over the phone module option anything I want with this, with this thermostat. So I can take my cell phone, call my thermostat at my house or at my cabin or wherever I got this thermostat and use it to turn on anything I want that's electric related. So I can have that stat wired to a relay that kicks on my hot tub. I can have it turn on the front porch lights at my cabin so when I'm driving up there the lights are already on. Anything I can boil down to a relay I can turn on. There's lots of cool accessories for this guy. You can't see it on the bottom of this stat, but there's a little uh, phone jack looking uh, slot, uh, an RJ11 plug-in if you will, and lots of accessories can plug into it. One of which is this infrared handheld remote. So I have this little module that plugs into the bottom of the stat and clicks right in there. And then I have the handheld remote, which is you know a tiny thing smaller than your cell phone. And I can use that to control my stat. Uh, it has to be in the same room as the stat in line of sight and can go up to about 35 feet or so. Um, and it can turn the temperature up, it can turn the temperature down, it can turn the fan on and off. Just some real basic control. So, you know, if you got a conference room or something like that, it might work out good. Or at a house in a home theater room, you can train your home theater remote to control the HVAC. So you can adjust things like that. Um, it's not an accessory that you need, it's just a fun one to have. Uh, the easy programmer is one I could probably argue that you need if you're a HVAC contractor. Uh, that programmer uses the same type of plug that plugs in that same slot in the bottom of the stat. But what this guy does is copy thermostats and paste them into other thermostats. So if you have a commercial job with whatever, five or six rooftops on it, and I spend 15 minutes getting one thermostat all set up the way I want, it's all perfect, and now I've got to go do that like four more times. Well, no. What I do in this case is I plug this guy in the bottom of the thermostat that I just configured. I press the download all button. Two seconds later, he sucks all the memory out of that stat. And he knows everything that that stat knows. Then I unplug it, walk over to my next stat, plug it into that one, and then I can upload everything into there. I just totally copy and paste it. Clone one stat, and dump it into the next. And I can either dump everything in there, all the settings, time schedules, programming, everything, 
or I can do just the time schedules, or I can do just the time of day clock. Any one of those three scenarios. So for guys that have, uh, you know, service guys in the field commercially, this is a great tool. You can use it on the residential stats as well. If you got a lot of applications, you do the same over and over, and you got your favorite settings in there for dual fuel and all this stuff. Great. Download it into your programmer. Throw it in your truck. That thing will has a battery in it, and it'll hold that program in there for months. So you should be pretty good. The comfort call is a fantastic accessory, and I mentioned it a little bit before when I said we can turn on uh, miscellaneous output to control whatever we want, turn it on and off over the phone. Uh, this guy is what enables that to happen. He also allows you to just, adjust your heating and cooling over the phone. So it comes in two pieces. Once again, one piece is this little cube here that I plug into the phone jack style uh, input on the bottom of this stat, and it clips right in there. And the other piece is the actual uh, modem for the comfort call. He plugs into the phone line. So I stick them under whatever, the desk at my office, plug my phone line into it, plug the little power cube into it, and then now this modem is talking wirelessly to this little module that plugs in the bottom of the stat. So in essence, I've just wirelessly connected my telephone system to my thermostat. Um, there's not a lot of times you need this, but there are some pretty cool applications. If you've got vacation homes, if you've got uh, a lake house cabin or something like that, you're driving up there on Friday night, you want to call up the thermostat and kick on the heating or air conditioning before you get there, you can do that. Um, basically, you, get, you set up two settings, um, one for occupied mode, which is called comfort settings, and one for the unoccupied mode, which is the energy saving mode. And you literally just call up your thermostat, you say energy saving mode, and it, it, it switches it over to that, uh, and then you don't have to worry about it. If you're driving over to your cabin or whatever it is, you say comfort settings, it enables the comfort settings, and then preheats or precools the space for you before you get there. Uh, and then, you know, use the extra relay to turn on your hot tub. Lock boxes. Everybody hates lock boxes, but they are kind of an evil necessity. Uh, there's several problems with lock boxes. Uh, one, they're ugly. Two, typically you have to take the stat off the wall, take all the wires out, put the back plate on, pull all the wires through it, rewire everything, and then put the lock box on. And the third problem is, it seems like everybody knows how to, uh, how to jerry rig this thing. Everybody knows where exactly to jam the paper clip to make something happen. Uh, so they don't really get much done. Every high school kid knows how to get around it, right? So we don't use these type of lock boxes with Venstar stats, and we hope you never put one on one of our stats. What we use instead is this locking ring cover. And you can see it's basically the same white molded plastic that we use for the stat. It matches it exactly. The middle of it's open. So what I actually can do is I can clip this thing on the front of the stat without removing the stat from the wall, without taking any wires off. I clip it on the front of the stat, turn the key, and it's locked down. It literally takes two seconds. And then the nice thing is my display is accessible, and my buttons are actually accessible. So you say, why would I want the buttons to be accessible? Well, if you don't want them to be accessible, you can go into the stat, lock the buttons, close the door of the stat, and then put this locking cover on top of it, and the buttons don't do anything. People can push them all day, and they won't do anything at all. But if you want, instead of locking them out completely, you can use that set point limiting we talked about earlier and put a high set point in. Say you can never go the, drive this thing above 80 degrees and put a low set point in. Say I never want you to be able to put it down below 65 or whatever I want and lock it in that way so they can use the up and down buttons but only to a certain point. But they can't open the door of the stat to unlock the stat completely or change its mode or anything like that. So the up and down buttons will allow you a little bit of flexibility and the bottom button below that becomes an override button cleaning crew comes in at night, you want them to turn on the HVAC for, say, one hour of override, they push the button, it goes occupied for one hour. It's a pretty easy way to do it. Um, I'll show you a couple more accessories here, then I'm going to show you the color uh, touchscreen stat. Um, one accessory here is called Add-A-Wire. This can be used with a Venstar thermostat or any other manufacturer of thermostat, as long as it's a 24-volt stat, like a you know, typical Honeywell, White Rogers type stat. Right? Obviously, we prefer to use it with Venstar, but you can use it with any one you want. And what it basically does, it takes a four-wire situation and turns it into five wires. So I'm taking an old stat off the wall. I did not have a common wire. I'm putting the new stat on. It needs a common wire. I don't have it, so I put this device on there instead, and it allows me to simulate a common wire. So let me show you basically the way that works. So here's my stat on the left here. I apologize, it's a little dark. I got a furnace on the right side. I got four wires on the wall right now. Put the new stat on. I got to wire hot and common. Got to do that. No choice on those two. And then I'm going to go ahead and wire uh, first stage of heating on the gray wire. 
Now I have one wire left, the yellow wire, and I have to do two things with that wire. I got to turn on the fan, which is G, and I got to turn on cooling, which is Y1. But I only got one wire left. So in the uh, add a wire kit comes two pieces, one of which is a little tiny diode, which has two wires going in and one wire going out. So I wire those in, put yellow on cooling, green on the fan, goes into the little diode, and my blue wire I connect in the wall to my existing yellow wire that's back there. And then back at the furnace, I put the second piece of the add a wire kit, this little box cube here, uh, in that furnace. And that yellow wire comes in, connects that same blue wire that I connected to on the other side, goes into my box, and resplits it into two wires. So the diode at the thermostat joins two wires together, and then the box at the furnace splits the two wires back apart. Um, so that's all it's doing is taking two 24 volt signals, combining them digitally, sending them over the wire, and then splitting those two back out. And this box knows, was it a call for heat, was it a call for cooling, or was it a call for both? And it enables that signal appropriately. And those get wired to the furnace like normal. Now in reality, there's going to be two more wires that hang out of the bottom of this box that we're not showing here. That's to power the box for 24 volts. But you get that right at the furnace. So no extra wires have to leave the furnace. Um, so this allows you to do that with any stat if you don't have enough wires. And if you needed two of them, if you have four wires and you need six, you can put two out of wire boxes in one furnace and, and do it that way. You can split as many wires as you want. You just can't split hot, which is R, and you can't split C for common. Those two you can't split. Any other 24 volt signal you can split. Extra zone is another accessory that can be used with Venstar stats or any other manufacturer's stat. And what it basically allows you to do is do a little subzoning control without having a full zoning system. So if you have a space that's typically overheating or overcooling, you can use this device to throttle that damper back some. So the way that works, I'll show you here. I got the, the uh, extra zone accessory. I wire that up to any thermostat I want, preferably a Venstar stat. And I wire the other side of that over to the damper up in the ceiling. And then I put the little uh, duct sensor that's attached to that extra zone kit, I put it at the inlet side of the damper so I can sense whether I have heating or cooling air available. If I have heating air available defined as above 80 degrees, then I tell the thermostat or I tell the extra zone box that I'm in the heating mode for the whole system. And I look at the stat and see if he wants heating. So if the stat calls for heating, the extra zone box says, well, I have 97 degrees available. That means heating's available. I'm going to go ahead and open the damper up because heating's available and you asked for it. But if the stat calls for heating and it sees 50 degree air in the duct, it's going to say, well, there's no point in opening up that damper because if I do, I'm just going to continue to overcool you and you obviously don't need cooling, you need heating. And then it works the same way in the opposite mode. If the stack calls for cooling and I got cold air available, the damper opens. If the stack calls for cooling and I have hot air available, the damper stays closed. Um, and you don't have to let them open and close all the way. You can put minimum positions depending on your damper style so you still have ventilation air and stuff like that. You can use that with any stat you want. You need three pieces. The stat, the extra zone kit, which comes with the, uh, the control module and the duct sensor, and then you need the damper. And you need 24 volt transformer, so I guess you need four things. Uh, the last accessory I'm going to show you here that can be used with any thermostat is the train interface board. Um, a lot of folks probably know that certain train rooftop units, uh, specifically Voyager units from about 1991 to about 2003, uh, they did not use standard conventional 24 volt thermostats. They had a special train communicating stat, um, but you could buy a board from train if you wanted to, to retrofit on the rooftop to allow it to use a stat. Um, this board is one made by Venstar that does the exact same thing as that train board does, uh, just at a significantly lower first point cost to you. So if you got existing train rooftops from 91 to 2003 and you want to put regular stats on them or you want to put an automation system or something like that on them, uh, give me a call and we can hook you up with these boards uh, at a much, much lower price than you normally would have paid. For the guys who are contractors on this call, I just want to let you know we also have a logo program for thermostats. Not just your, uh, your company name and, and phone number and website and all that, but we'll actually put your actual logo on the stat, which is a, a significant step up from what most things do. Um, and you can do it on some of these on the actual plastic cover of the stat, and then you can put them on the stats as you need them. Or in this case, the battery stat, you can put on the battery door, which is physically inside the stat, so no one would actually see it unless they opened up the front cover. Then they would see your logo on the battery door. 
uh, and then we can logo on these other stats as well. Personally, I would recommend to you to use gray color logoing. Um, you know, in a residential home, people don't want to see your blue and red logo staring at them in the dining room. But a, a subtle light gray would do the trick. It, it would serve its purpose of advertising for you, having your phone number and website, but not blaring at somebody while they're trying to eat dinner. All right. The next section is going to be on the new Venstar color touch screen stat. Before I do that, I'm just going to pop over and look at any of the questions that may have come up and answer those. Let's see. Give me one second. Let me see. Um, there was a question here asking if that will adjust the humidifier accordingly. I'm assuming that the question is in regards to the slimline stats, the T1800 and T1900. And the answer is yes. Uh, if you have the uh, the T1900 stat with the built-in humidity sensor, or the T1800 where you can put a humidity sensor into it, it can be used to enable the humidifier in a residential application uh, to turn the humidifier on and off based on humidity. So you don't have two devices sitting on the wall. You don't have a stat, a thermostat, and a humidistat sitting right next to each other. You have one device doing both. That would be that guy's purpose in life. So yes. All right, so that was the last question here. So let me minimize that and go back to the presentation here. Um, now what I want to show you guys um, briefly here is the new Venstar color touchscreen stat. Uh, this thing should be released. I hate to say times because every time I do that, I get burned. But uh, I'm going to say in two to three weeks, this thing should be available for purchase. That's my guess. Uh, so I'm showing it to you now. For most of you, this is probably the first time you've ever seen it or heard of it. Um, and we showed it to a couple contractors on, on a couple of training sessions, but for most of you, you probably haven't seen it before. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the name of it is Color Touch, all one word, and obviously Color Touch what tells you exactly what it does. It's a color screen and it's a touch screen, both of those things, right? So there's no exposed buttons anywhere on here. Everything is actually the screen, just like it would be on your iPhone or something like that. So this is what this guy can do. Um, this guy is going to be called the uh, T5800, this is model number, 5800. Uh, that's the first release. There will be some other ones that come out down the road here. Uh, but the very first one that's coming out in a few weeks is the T5800. Uh, it can handle up to four stages of heating and two stages of cooling. Uh, like all the other stats we mentioned, it can do gas electric systems or it can do heat pumps. It does do dual fuel, just like the Slimline stat, and it can do it based on outside air temperature. So. When we get down to whatever temperature you specify, say 30 degrees, for example, turn off the heat pump and turn on the gas furnace. It'll do that kind of logic. Um, just like the Slimline stat, it can be made programmable or non-programmable. It can be manual changeover or auto changeover. Uh, we can limit the set points so people can't go up too high or down too low and get crazy with it. Uh, all those same features are built into this guy here. Um, he does handle outside air sensors, both for dual fuel changeover, like we just mentioned, as well as displaying to you the outdoor air temperature so you can see what it is and you know decide how to dress the kids in the morning and all that kind of stuff. Other cool stuff with this, um, when uh, an alert message pops up, such as you know time to change your filter, it will actually pop up with not just that message, but also the logo of the dealer who set it up, assuming they put their logo in there, and their phone number and website or wherever else you want to put in there. So when the message comes up, it'll direct them who to call to get that service taken care of. Uh, it is multi-language, although most of us will probably just use it in the English mode. But it does have a Spanish and French mode as well. Uh, there's some uh, optional faceplate choices. I'll show you in a second. And then the thermostat itself, you can see on there right now, i got a picture of, a, of a, a mountain range butting up to an ocean. That uh, That wallpaper back there can be anything you want, any JPEG photo you want to load in there, you can do that. So you can literally take a picture with your own camera of whatever, the grandkids or something like that, and load it into the stat, and that becomes your wallpaper in the background. Additionally, um, you can customize the screensaver. So the screensaver is just like on your computer, after you haven't touched it for X amount of minutes, it basically falls asleep, and then um, the screensaver becomes whatever you want. So it can turn into a clock and show you the time, or it can play a slideshow of any photos that you want. So once again, you can take pictures with your camera or take them off the internet or whatever you want to do. And using the same SD card that's in your camera, you can put that on the side of the stat and use those pictures uh, as your screensaver. So instead of having you know the LCD picture frame hanging on the wall, 
your thermostat becomes your picture frame. And it's only a thermostat behind the scenes on the front. It's actually a digital photo frame, which is pretty cool. So instead of getting uh, Grandma and Grandpa a digital photo frame preloaded with kids' pictures, you can get them a brand new stat preloaded with your kids' pictures. This is just kind of shown here if various modes you might see on the stat. Um, everything is basically text driven. There's no guessing really here. So like right here, it says 75 degrees on the left side. It'll say right below that. That's the current room temperature. So no question on what is that? Is that my was that my set point? Is that what I'm asking for? Is that what it is? It's the current temperature. In this case, the system is off. It says it right on the screen. If I touch that screen, boom, instead of saying system off, it'll now say desired room temp, in this case 72 degrees. So once again, there's no question, what is that 72 number? That's the desired room temperature. That's what I want. I'm asking for 72. It's currently 75. Uh, and it tells me now, because I'm 72 and I want 75, it tells me equipment's in the cooling mode. I'm going to try to cool it from 75 down to 72. I can push these warmer or cooler buttons to raise it up and down. And then when it gets satisfied, it would say nothing on there again. All right? These are different uh, face plates that are going to be available for this stat. So if you look back on one of these screens here, the standard face plate is a white face plate that matches all the color of all the other thermostats and pretty much everybody's stat on the market. And you can take that thing off, pop it off, pop a new color on. It literally takes like two seconds to do it. Um, I believe the first two available are the black and the silver ones with, uh, with more coming down the road. So you can change those out to match your decor a little bit better at your house. It also comes with a little uh, mini CD that you can load onto your computer and you can use that CD to handle the configuration of your thermostat, handle the picture and stuff like that. You don't have to do that. Like I said, you can do everything from the front of the stat, stat just like a normal stat. Um, but if you do it this way, um, you can do it on your computer as well. So here's just showing you some of the screenshots of how it works and the choices you have. You can load the dealer information on there. Um, you can set up the schedules on there if you want to do firmware upgrades. So when you take the SD card out of your thermostat and plug it into your computer, it goes out on the internet and looks to see if there's an upgrade for the stat. If there is, it'll say, do you want to upgrade your stat to version blah, blah, blah. You can say yes. And then when you put that card back in your thermostat, it'll update it and you'll get any new features that have become available for that stat. I'm just showing you how to load uh, pictures onto this guy. It's like using any other uh, software tool app um, that you might use like you would use for your cell phone or something like that. And once you load it in, it gives you kind of a fake showing of your thermostat so you can see if the picture's the right size and stuff like that. If it's not, you can zoom it in, blow it up, make it fit properly, and then lock it in. Right? And then now you can see what it looks like when I overlay everything on top of it. Uh, if you are a contractor, you can load your, load your company logo in the left-hand corner of this stat here. And you can have your company name. Um, you can have your phone number, website, email address, your name, any of that kind of stuff listed on there in plain text along with your logo. And that will be something that they can look at on there, the customer could, or if there is an uh, alert message, it would pop up as well. You can also look at and edit all the schedules on this stat, and you can do this from the software tool, or you can use it, do it from the screen of the stat, and it will kind of list everything for you and tell you what day of the week, when is it going to start and stop, when am I going to have it due, is it going to be manual, auto, where am I heating and cooling set points, all that kind of stuff. And you can go in and change all of those as well. Like I said, if there's any firmware upgrades, it can be uh, downloaded from the internet to the SD card that can slide into the, into the side of the stat. So if you want the new features that come out, you don't have to uh, buy a new stat necessarily. One of the best things about this stat is the price of this thing. Um, you have seen color touchscreen stats from other manufacturers. Um, this guy is less than half of the price some of those stats. Actually less than half the price of the main brand of those stats. Uh, so it is quite financially attractive. Uh, it does quite a bit of, bit of stuff here. So with that, I'm going to look over here um, at the questions and see what other questions people had and I'll do my best to answer them. So if you have any questions, please type them in the box and uh, we'll see here. Um, Right, looks like I don't have any outstanding questions that I can answer right now. I do have one from Paul Chapello, and I will call Paul and update him on his question because it's a little. Yeah, I don't want to hear the answer, so uh, it's unrelated. Um, anybody else have a question they want to type in? 
All right, I will hang on for a couple minutes here um, and see if anybody types any more questions in. With that, though, that does conclude the webinar. If you have any questions or you need help with anything, just give me a call. My name is Ryan Hoger, 708-670-6383. And like I said, I work with TEC, Harry Alter, and Excelsior for all of their locations in all regions, so Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Missouri, and Kansas City. So give me a call if you need anything, and, uh, and hopefully we'll see this color touch screen stat in your hands in a couple weeks. Thank you very much.